Over the past three and a half years, I've accrued a lot of experience with the frankly amazing home automation software called Home Assistant. More and more device makers are joining the Works with Home Assistant program, and in general, Haas is getting easier to use and more feature-rich by the day. Since I've spent so long testing devices, writing automations, and even making my own smart devices, I thought that I would share my favorite things to use with Home Assistant. I've specifically picked my top five, which includes both incredibly powerful and useful free software and devices that are worth every penny. Let's dive in starting from five and working up to my favorite at number one. Coming in at number five is the first free bit of software that completely changes what you can do with Home Assistant the Home Assistant Community Store are hacks. This is basically a requirement when you install Home Assistant, and somewhat frustratingly, it does require a GitHub account to work, and you will need to link hacks to your GitHub accounts, but once you've done that, man, this thing is amazing. Hacks basically acts as a one-click install agent for thousands of community-made integrations. You can search through all of the repositories available, and chances are, if you can think of it, someone has already made it. These can be integrations for devices. One of the top downloaded integrations is for Millet, Miley uh, devices, you know, your smart washing machine or dishwasher, or whatever else, to work with Home Assistant. But everything from my Skoda to your TCL TV remote is here. Or they can be integrations for cloud services, stuff like OpenAI Extended Conversation Agent, but also Open Weather Map, or one that I found while writing this, Solcast. Solcast gives you a forecast of how much solar energy you are likely to produce today, and once you've got an API key, you can tie the integration into the sort of energy view and view the expected versus actual solar power generation. This is pretty amazing, especially because it's surprisingly accurate, at least in the sort of, sort of trends. I might need to tweak the value slightly, but damn, this is cool. The other cloud integration that I actually use from Hacks is actually from the DVLA or the DVLA service. Yeah, the UK Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency have an API, which lets me see when mine and my wife's cars are due for their MOT or road tax. That's pretty cool and handy. There are also a bunch of integrations that just add really useful features, like the adaptive lighting integration that I've used from almost day one. This automatically changes the brightness and color temperature of your smart light bulbs throughout the day. So it's a sort of cool and bright light in the morning and gradually warms and dims into the evening and night. I think this was the first custom integration I installed, and I love it so much. It makes the smart lights feel genuinely smart and makes the house feel more bright and active during the day, yet warm and cozy at night. This is a must install for me. Oh, and there are also dashboard integrations in here too, mostly things like different cards to show on your dashboard to show different information or to control entities differently. There's loads here. I have a few like the mini graph card, but there's loads. Weather cards, the mushroom sliders that actually look really nice and are great to interact with, and just so much more. Hacks is an incredibly useful tool and something I highly recommend you install, if nothing else, because it lets you install part of the next item on this list. At number four, we have my favorite automation software, Node-RED. Node-RED is a visual programming tool that basically acts as Home Assistant's automations on steroids. All of my truly smart functionality is run by Node-RED, and once you install the add-on in the add-on store, you'll also want to use Hacks to install the Node-RED companion, which ties Hass into Node-RED really well. 
Within Node-RED, you have flows. These are basically just pages with all of the functions and logic that you'd need to make something smart. There are loads of Home Assistant nodes as well. Things like regularly polling an entity's state, getting history, zones, times, and also sending and controlling actions too. For example, my smart heating flow. This does a whole lot of stuff, like presence, presence detection using mine and my wife's phone's IP addresses, setting the temperature of the sort of central heating based on multiple temperature sensors in multiple rooms, and turning on and off individual radiators based on that room's temperature. And also changing what rooms to base the set temperature off of, depending on the time of day. My solar energy flow does a whole lot too. Mostly stuff like calculating energy usage and cost savings, but also now controlling my automatic changeover switch too. I use Node-RED kind of wrong, like in the sense that I know JavaScript pretty well, and that's what the function blocks use, so I mostly just use the nodes that get me data, and then write some code in a function block, and then use the actions of our entity blocks to update or control stuff. The correct way, and I put that in air quotes here because if it works, there is no correct way, is to use the built-in logic blocks, stuff like switch, change, or range blocks. But use it however you want. This is just a great way to do a lot more with your automations, control multiple devices from one, do different things depending on other items, certain states. It's all so customizable and really easy to get your head around, and so I highly recommend it. Number three on my list is even more customizable, and that is ESP Home. ESP Home is made by the same people who make Home Assistant, Nabucasa, and it's basically a platform to really simply create your own smart home devices, specifically using ESP boards from Espressif, like the ESP32 or ESP8266. I've made a number of ESP Home devices, including to control my studio lights, and doing so is pretty simple. You don't need to really code anything, you just write out what you want your board to do. Say, toggle a pin high or low by using a switch, or talk to a specific sensor by telling it to use that sensor's library. You can do some really clever stuff like interlock input so that you can't have two opposing switches on at the same time for safety's sake, or really advanced stuff like lambdas, basically little snippets of code that let you filter or alter data from the board itself. I use those for my DIY weather station, and while I do actually still need to tweak that to make it more useful and accurate, the fact that you can do this so easily and incredibly cheaply with Node MCU boards, well, that's just amazing. I highly recommend you check these out if you want to make your own smart devices, especially if you want to try making something that's sort of dumb tech smart. As for number two on the list, well, that might end up being number one in a few years, but for now, it stays at number two, which is Matter. Matter is a mesh networking protocol, although to be pedantic, Thread is actually the mesh networking underneath it, and that lets you do like have all of your smart tech talk to each other, and it strengthens your, your sort of network signal, and they all kind of work as one cohesive unit. Matter devices, specifically the ones I like, which is Matter over Thread devices, don't connect to your Wi-Fi and therefore can become or can't become part of a botnet. They aren't horrendously insecure and they don't clog up your Wi-Fi either. Thread-based Matter devices connect to Home Assistant with a little dongle like this one which is generally only £30 or so, and means that devices like smart bulbs, plugs, sensors, and even door locks, I'm not sure that I would recommend that, but still, can all talk to Home Assistant, and only Home Assistant. I personally use uh, an Eve smart plug, a Nanoleaf uh, smart bulb, and amazingly, even the HomeKit-enabled Nanoleaf strip actually connects to the same thread network and works just fine too. Matter is likely the future of smart home tech. 
The big players like Philips and Samsung seem to be pivoting to Matter over Thread devices, so in a couple of years it's more likely that you'll find Matter devices than basically anything else. But coming in at number one is my current favourite, Zigbee. Zigbee is, at least currently, the gold standard for smart home devices. It is a full stack protocol, meaning there's none of this matter over thread nonsense, it's Zigbee or it ain't. Zigbee devices mesh together, so even if a device is right at the other end of your house from your home assistant machine and the Zigbee dongle, so coordinator, those devices can still connect and work via other devices, or at least via other mains powered devices. I have a lot of Zigbee kit. Switch plates, bulbs, thermostats, radiator TRVs, a custom Zigbee doorbell I made myself, and by far my favourites, these little Sonoff R1 Mini relays. These are just a complete game changer. These take your regular wall mounted switches as an input and output to the light or lights that you want to control. These things are amazing for one crucial feature, which only just started working properly in a recent update to Home Assistant, which is the decoupled mode. Basically, instead of your main light switches just killing the power to your smart bulbs, either with the relay or without, um, the relay can basically take that switch input as a separate input and the power stays on to the, the sort of light bulb itself, and then you just create an automation in Home Assistant, or Node Red, to control the lights via Zigbee. This means that the lights retain power, so stuff like the adaptive lighting can keep updating the lights, so whenever you command them on, they are at the right brightness and temperature for the time of day. They also stay connected to the network, so they can act as repeaters for the whole network strengthening it, rather than just being switched on and off throughout the day and not functioning as repeaters when they're actually off. These things are my favourite smart home product, specifically because they enable everything else to work so well. Oh, and because they're mains powered, they're also repeaters too, and they aren't overly expensive. I will leave links to everything, or at least all of the tech that I'm talking about, in the description if you're interested. You can find a Zigbee version of basically anything smart right now. Door and window sensors, curtain robots, smart radiator valves, light switches, relays, heating controls, light bulbs, literally anything you can think of, there is likely a Zigbee version of it. The magic thing about Zigbee 2 is that it's been around for a while, and lots of supposedly proprietary smart tech is actually just Zigbee. Take the British Gas Hive Smart Thermostat. That's actually just two Zigbee devices that are paired to each other and then to the hub to you know communicate. And you can just, using Home Assistant, pair them and use it like any other smart thermostat and controller, which means that these things keep working. You don't have to rip them out and replace them when Hive end of life's them, which they have already done, mind you. You just you know, want to head to the Zigbee to MQTT website to see a full list of the supported devices, although I use ZHA in Home Assistant instead of Zigbee to MQTT specifically, but there is a lot of stuff to choose from, and a lot of stuff that you might learn is actually just Zigbee under the hood. I think by far my favourite thing, though, is Home Assistant itself. The free and open source nature makes it inherently lovable, and to have such a powerful and ever-improving bit of software to take control of your own smart home tech is just incredible, and for free no less. Now I've got it, I can't imagine not having Home Assistant automating my life. The quality of life features it brings, from soft on, colour changing throughout the day lights, to a smart heating system that I never have to think about, is just amazing. And the fact that I can control it all entirely in-house, no connections to Chinese servers just to turn my lights on, no Amazon spying on me, it's just perfect. If you don't already have Home Assistant set up, I cannot recommend it any more than I already have. You need this, and luckily I have guides on how to get it set up and running, and set up all of the cool tech that I've got here. It's all live on the channel already, I'll leave that in the cards above or on the end cards if you're interested. 
Of course, those are my top five things to use with Home Assistant, but I would love to hear you, what you think in the comments down below. What sort of smart home tech are you using, especially if you're already, already using Home Assistant? And if not, what do you think of the absolute glazing that I've been doing in this video? Let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, I'll leave links to all of the tech that I have and that I use on a daily basis in the description if you're interested. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out that full smart home series on the end cards if you want to keep up to date and see how I've done all this stuff. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.